Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Videocast. What are we up to, the fourth one now? Yeah, actually. I'm starting to lose track. Yeah, I believe so. Anyway, so yeah, we will be continuing to keep you up to date on the project Terra Zone Shoot for the Stars. We've been working on the visual novel system some more, because that'll be a big part of the game. You'll be interacting with all the characters in said game via this visual novel system. And what I mean by visual novel system, you have your character portrait. And in addition to that, they speak to you and to each other. That sort of thing. And uh, we also began adding expressions so that they're not just still shots on the screen. We want to make it as fun as possible. So we've been playing around with poses and expressions on these puppets. And uh, Kayla's been doing that, I'd say, in terms of manipulating the puppets. Uh, yeah, I've been actually adding a lot of uh, optimization to the puppets. When I first started using uh, the spine system, I uh, added way too much detail. Sometimes you just have to simplify, and then it becomes a lot better both for performance as well as making it easier to adjust the puppets as you're moving them around. And it was incredible, like seeing like a huge difference of just uh, simplifying all the vertices and making it both easier for myself as well as a lot nicer for those potato computers out there that might try our game out. <laughs> this is a significant gain. We basically doubled our FPS, which it was already a pretty decent FPS, but it doubled it. So yeah, much yeah, better. We saw some pretty significant gains from it. And uh, Ryan has also been working on more scripts. He's been making more magical spells for us artists to use. <laughs> <laughs> um, the game uh, having a day and night system required a way to uh, assemble the rooms for each day and time of day. So I, using Photoshop, created a script that allows uh, the artists to designate where NPCs will be and designate the events that will be tied to those NPCs. Um, and then using the script, we save out the room for that day. And with a program I created in C Sharp, takes the files created through Photoshop and merges them together into a collective room data file uh, that the game will be able to read uh, for every room. C Sharp, not C doll. <laughs> <laughs> We also, in other news, have uh, created the official list for all four of the starter decks. Earth, Wind, Fire, and Water. But wait, there's more than four. However, as you know it, there are four. Anyone who played against us and learned how to play the game via the E-Table Con a couple months back know the four base affinities. And yes, we have officially redesigned them so that they're a lot more beginner friendly and they're a lot more fun to play. Yeah, I know I've mentioned that I'm pretty excited to try them out. I've been working pretty hard at uh, updating the templates. And speaking of making them more fun, that also goes towards the templates as well. Um, you guys out there with the, all those amazing homemade trading card games, I often just kind of look and see what's out there. And I've been actually pretty inspired and I saw like you know some cool ideas i'm like oh this person does that that person does that then got my gears turning and actually a couple people that we've shown the art to have recommended this in the past which was to have a border around the cards and we decided hey you know what let's try it so we tried the border and it in my opinion and i think like all of you guys can agree too they look a lot more poppy the cards just automatically like they look fun you know and uh, i i'm it's very pleased very clear what the function of the card is now too which is very important yeah before it was just color coded with like the title like the where the name of the card is but now it's the entire border is designed is color coded to that as well so it's really hard to miss and which is really important because there's a lot to keep track of on the board so that further um simplified in some ways some rulings like just quick visual guides like both for searching through the deck as well as what's already on the field when playing the cards 
yeah, the blue, orange, and etc. You can quickly look at your field and tell this is a fighting creature, so these are the creatures I can attack with during my battle phase. Little things like that that'll speed up the gameplay and you'll know immediately what you're doing. Versus how it was before. Uh, in addition to that, we're playing up on the card lore even more. That's right. Anyone who knew us before and knew that we were putting little stories in the cards, just a little uh, something extra to separate from other card games, because we know that they do do um, like their own kinds of lore and things, although we try to push it to the next level to like really interweave certain characters, events, time periods, etc just to help us stand out more. Whatever you can do to make your creation stand out is something to push. And even in the starter decks themselves, if you look carefully at like the different cards and you're like, hmm, I wonder, and you look at maybe another card image and you're like, huh, maybe those two go together. And we even like, we're planning like two, three, even four steps ahead. Some card lore actually even shows up in later packs. So you might be like, huh, that looks familiar. <laughs> so we've been putting a lot of effort into the story of the cards as well. Oh yes, because that way it adds just more fun to the game and that's what we at the end of the day want from uh, people is to have fun while playing the game. Oh, absolutely. All right, and that's about as much as we have to give you at this time. Please know that we are working behind the curtains pretty much every day on our big project and every few weeks we'll continue to release these video cast episodes to let you know what's going on we're still alive we're still working and all that good stuff so anyone who's watched the previous episodes remember we're really pushing our twitter to gauge who's interested in the project and who isn't as well as getting to know the community in terms of uh, things we're interested in as well as other video game creators so if you're interested and want to see more updates from us follow us on twitter and stand by for our various updates including our devlogs which can be linked to our site mysticmassmedia.com anyway guys that wraps it up officially for this episode of videocast Stay tuned for more Terrazone content.